All right, this question is kind of annoying. Uh, we're first, we're given an equation, but it's an x cubed. We don't know a lot about that. But hopefully that word factor reminds you that we're gonna need to make some of those little parentheses things. And you factor all the time. This is a very fundamental idea in uh, Algebra 2 and high school algebra. So it's definitely something you should be familiar with. You probably do it more often with quadratics. Um, but it really doesn't matter here because this kind of is a quadratic in disguise. In any situation when we're asked to factor, the first thing that we should look for is what's known as a GCF factor, okay? So greatest common factor, meaning what is the biggest thing that divides into all the components? Sometimes there is nothing, or sometimes the GCF is one, so it doesn't really affect how we factor. Like in a lot of quadratics, we don't even do this step because it just doesn't apply. But in something like this, I really want it to work because I don't want to deal with an x cubed. That is beyond what my brain can handle. But because each of the terms includes an x, I can GCF that thing out. Each of these terms is also divisible by two, so I can do that at the same time. So my first step here is gonna take two x out of each component. So if I do that for the first term, I'm gonna get x squared. Then I'm gonna have half of 42 is 21, so that's gonna be 21x and half of 208 is 104. And remember, if you factor, that's kind of like an advanced version of division, right? It's kind of like, you know, pulling out something and reversing distribution. So if you're ever unsure if you factored correctly, just distribute it back in to double check, right? So if I multiplied each of these by 2x, what would happen? Well, 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. Then plus 42x squared plus 108 X. So it would, or for 208x, it would all work out back to where I was. And now, even though the x is pulled out, I've got this other piece that's in better territory. This is a quadratic. So I still need to factor um, this quadratic, but at the very least, it's kind of following the normal rules. I have what's known as an a equals 1 situation, meaning there's no number in front of the x squared. The, the lack of a number means the number is 1, so that's really good. So basically, I'm looking for two numbers that add to 21 and multiply to 104. And I don't know off the top of my head what multiplies to 104, but I have a calculator, so I can kind of just guess and check. So I know that they're going to be 21 apart. So let's just pick something. Let's do 4, right? So 104 divided by 4 is 26. So that's kind of convenient. Um, they look like they're pretty close. The problem is that they're, uh, uh, they're both positive, so it's going to cause a problem. Um, so what we need to do is bring them a little closer together here. So let's do um, 8. Let's see if that works. 104 divided by 8. So 8 times 13, so 8 plus 13 is 21. So this is going to work. So look, I was checking the multiplication because that's the piece that usually has more limited options. And then once I have the two factors of 104, I'm adding them together to see. So 4 plus 26 is 30, 8 plus 13 is 21. So that's my option. Uh, so now we're going to factor this thing again. And now we have x plus 8, x plus 13. So what do they want? They want x plus b, where b is a positive constant. So that's what gets rid of this piece, because in this case, the factor would be 0, and that is not a positive number. Uh, but b, in this case, would be 8, and they want the smallest possible. That's why 8 and not 13. So you know, 13 is a factor, or x plus 13 is a factor, but just because of the specifics of the question, they wanted um, the smallest one. And just to kind of round out my little chart here that I was going for, after we do the GCF, our hope is that we have what's known as A equals 1 factoring, and that is exactly what we did right here, and that makes us happy, because to most of us, that is what we think of as factoring. So that's where we usually go first, but sometimes there's a GCF, something we can pull out that makes it a lot easier, especially when we have things like x to the third or x to the fourth that we wouldn't be able to do normally.